What is up, guys? It is the sports sir, Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio, part of NGSE Sports. Remember the website, guys. It's NGSESports.com for all your current sports content. Happy Thursday to everyone out there. Hope everyone out there is staying mm-hmm. safe as we draw closer to the, the weekend, but we also draw to the end of March. Tomorrow is April Fool's Day. April starts tomorrow, the fourth month of the year. The year's going by very fast already uh, this year, but uh, we will be on you know April 1st is tomorrow, so let the spring get here. Obviously, we have baseball on the horizon next starting next week. Uh, the NBA season is winding down. Um, the NFL draft is less than a month, you know, about a month mm-hmm. away. So we'll be talking about that moving forward. Well, uh, we are uh, sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com, the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, mm-hmm. decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. And remember, Zen Spaces begins with you guys. Be kind to yourself and one another. Again, guys, welcome into the Walker Report. As we do this every Thursday, let me bring on my two esteemed co-hosts. Good evening. How are we doing? Good evening, Adam. Need a haircut? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, very true. Very true. How's everyone's uh, week going so far? All right. Oh, my week's over. I'm so happy. I'm yeah. done. It's been a long that's couple of weeks. Yeah. It's been a long, it's been a long couple of weeks, so I'm glad to have a weekend. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's thank goodness. It's it's finally, uh, finally here. Let's go ahead, guys, and start with. Let's start with a topic that we, um, don't really talk about a lot of, but their pay per view. Uh, is this Saturday and Sunday? Uh, yes. WrestleMania is happening this weekend. Um, before that happens, it looks like, from what I've read, that the Steiner brothers will be um, announced into the okay. WWE Hall of Fame. So that's wow. pretty cool. cool. I did not, I did not know that, uh, but they are joining the WWE Hall of Fame. So let's see, WrestleMania thirty eight will be in um, Dallas, Texas at Jerry World. Okay. So that wow. is where it is located this year. And just like it was last year, it will be a two-night two event starting yes. on Saturday. Um, here, guys, are the uh, – here's the card predictions and all that stuff. Sure. Uh, this is from CBS, um, WWE. Um the first match on day one could be the Raw Women's Championship mm-hmm. featuring oh. Becky Lynch, who holds the title, um, okay. will be facing a, uh, facing off against Bianca Belair. Uh, she's been the rising star in the women's division since coming. I've heard. Um, it's, so here's what they say. Lynch returned to WWE okay. and beat Blair in seconds to become the Raw Women's Champion. Um, at SummerSlam, Belair has been waiting for a definite rematch and settling things at WrestleMania is one of the only ways that WWE can make up for a disastrous decision they made with how they approach Lynch's return. Uh, Okay, so they have that. Um, They have The Miz and Logan Paul versus The Mysterios. I know Logan Paul was in WWE or was in WrestleMania, but I guess he is. Uh, <laughs> so, um, one of, uh, Seth Rollins has a match and it says TBA. So that's two to be, two to be announced. Yeah. Uh, Drew McIntyre will face happy Corbin. I wonder if that's going to be the McAfee match. That could be the McAfee match. I, yeah. Um, the SmackDown tag team champions has the Usos who are the champions against Rick Boggs and Shinsuke Nakamura. Okay. Nakamura, so that will be that. The SmackDown Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. Ooh, uh, like that, like that. 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 Yeah. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin will appear on the KO show. Kevin mm-hmm. Owens has been calling him every name in the book 
since I've been watching highlights on YouTube about it. Right. And uh, he's called some cool Steve Austin, every name in the book. And I think from the past, guys, we all know what happens when people call out Stone Cold Steve Austin. And you just didn't yeah. know for them. <laughs> so, um, but that's the day one. No, wait, uh, you said well, no, the tag team match. What did you say it was in the men's division? Uh, the Usos versus. Uh, I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor that and, the Usos were going to take on um, Will Smith and Chris Rock in a tag team charity match. <laughs> that would be funny. Just kidding. Match. Just kidding. A just slap kidding. match. <laughs> yes. I had to put uh, it in. I'm sorry. I had to do it. But that, that's that, count anyway. That's the uh, yeah, false count anyway. That is the uh that's the that's day one. That's the uh night one matches. The night two okay. matches will be title versus title, right. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. That'll be the premier yes. match. I don't think the WWE is gonna put that one right off the bat on day two. I think that'll be the that's your main event. Man. I hope not. Um the other matches are Edge versus AJ Styles. The um, women's tag team one. champions is Queen Zelina and Carmella versus Naomi and Shasha Banks versus Rhea Lipley and Liv Morgan versus, excuse me, Natalia and Shayna Baszler. So it's a fatal four way for the tag team champions in the women's right. division. Um, no, Pat McAfee's facing Austin, Th- uh, Austin Theory, bud, right here. Okay. Okay. So. It says despite I didn't know, I was just the rumors, it's it says right here, but in the notes that there were rumors that he was going to face Vince McMahon at wrestling. Mm, that would have been fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you finish up that, and then uh, yeah, um, Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville again. The, I think Jackass isn't okay. that movie getting ready to come out on streaming, or has it already come out? It's going to be oh, in a couple weeks. Okay. Okay. I saw it. Has it already dropped? I don't. I mean, I've been seeing clips on hey. YouTube, so I'm not sure if it's if it's dropped on Paramount Plus or anything like that. So I don't know. It should be, but hasn't already. Okay. Okay. Um, the Raw Tag Team Champions is RK Bro. That, of course, is uh, the uh, Randy Orton and what is his name? Um, uh, Matt Riddle versus the Street Profits versus the Alpha Academy. So there's a Triple threat for those. Bobby Lashley versus Omos. Ooh, that's a, that's a big guy versus a big guy. That should be interesting. And that is the matches that they have, you know, this be the next two days uh, for WrestleMania. Now, again, just like I think we've talked in the past, nothing really other than maybe the Lesnar versus um, Reigns. Right. I'm not looking at any of those matches to be an absolute draw. Barnard. No. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Let's, well, no, Ronda Rousey. I would, I would think that'd be that. Be, well, that's that's right. compelling. Go ahead. I think the Rousey match should be pretty, uh, pretty intriguing. Her and Charlotte Flair. Yeah, that will be a good one. Yeah, that's that. that. Yeah. And that could but be. I mean, for the most part, I mean, there's nothing really very. There's nothing like jumping out. Yeah. Yeah, it's very vanilla. Very vanilla WrestleMania. I actually, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm actually going Galactic Bowling Saturday night. I got invited over to watch day one, and I turned it <laughs> turned it down to go bowling. So sorry, but Galactic I, Bowling now. What is that? Some kind of a space age uh, bowling alley or something? Or no, they turn all the lights off and light everything. Oh, glow, oh, glow in the dark. Club music going on. So oh, it's kind so of like being in the club. Bowling. It's really fun. That if sounds you, like more fun than watching WrestleMania. If, no if you guys, if, if you guys have never done it, I'm sure you I've have done, in, Jersey, in Tennessee. I I would go and do it. It's fun. Usually, it's you have to get there early to get a lane because it fills up quite yeah. quickly. Yeah, but bad. if you get there early to get a lane, and I mean, I think it's like 13 bucks, so I'm gonna go and spend some time with it's my was, best female friend and friend. So yeah, yep. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. What is it called? Glow in the dark bowling. Go in the okay. dark bowling. It's yeah. There's different terms for That's it. That's what we used to call it. Remember, yeah. I better, remember this was back in the eighties. Keep that in mind. Right. <laughs> there's different. Am I, I that old? Yeah. There's different terms for it. You could you could say that. Yeah, you could call it that. There's different yeah. terms. For I it. did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's different. Must terms. be old. Yeah, I would have called it glow in the dark bowling too. So yeah, it's yeah yeah. It's yeah there's there's uh yeah. Um. <laughs> Let me. I don't know, but I I didn't have any notes, but for 
for NASCAR this week. Where are they at? Are they? Oh, this week we're at Richmond. Richmond, okay. So they're in Virginia. It's a sunny afternoon. I'm, ex- I'm I'm looking forward. To, uh, I like Richmond in the day. Okay. I'm I'm uh, let me look at one thing real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Talk amongst yourselves, room. Bye. Yeah. It says penalty number twenty three team hit with suspensions. Yeah, Hamilton. they had a tire fall off. Hamilton no, those final those anchor feature matchups. Um, it's super hot, but it'll be nice. So let's see. It says qualifying order for NASCAR uh, in Richmond. And it looks like it is as follows. And correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, the pole position is BJ McLeod. McLeod. I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not even sure if I'm yes, I, I think that's how they're going to roll them out for qualifying. Yeah, Corey LaJoy, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. That's the, that's the order they're going to take. Okay. That's the order they're going to take qualifying. Kurt, yeah, Kurt Busch, Ty Dillon, Harrison Burton. Okay. So who the penalties, bud, with the tire? So did they lose crew members? What is it that? Yeah, the the crew members suspended one week, I believe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. And then the co the crew chief is suspended for four weeks. Jeez. Mm-hmm. So is that is is that is that four races or is that one race? Yeah. And so four, it's four, four races. races. Wow. Yeah, four race weekends. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, but then again, you know, we I think they they had said something when the season started that they were going to start penalizing teams. Mm-hmm. If they had, you know, malfunctions and stuff, they were going to make sure yeah. safety was a big Yeah, uh, safety is paramount. Yeah, big very uh very big this year. So, you know what? That's good. I and I hope they stick with it. They don't just go, yeah, it'll be this year and then next year we'll get rid of it. I hope they stick with the with the rules. It depends on how I, w- I would like to see it reduced to two two races. Okay. No. I, I just think, I just think it's too it's too steep. I don't I don't think yeah. I don't think crew chiefs are out there not putting tires on the car. Hmm. I, I don't. That's true. That's true. Losing a tire is gonna ruin your race. Mm-hmm. Um. I would I'd like to see it reduced to two races. That's just me. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that'd be your idea. I won't argue with that. I mean, I f- four weeks. I mean, that's a month. So you're not going to have your crew chief for a month, right? So I mean, I'm sure they have assisting. I'm sure they have other guys that will step up in that role. Um, yeah, still, the, yeah. At the end of the day, that would suck to lose. You it, know. it really, it really, it really sucks when you when you're a small operation like that. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, although yes. twenty three eleven has the personnel to be able to handle it, so it, it but in, in retrospect, it would impact more of the smaller teams than it would. Yeah, definitely. It really, it really okay. hamstring a smaller team. But yeah, uh, mm-hmm. even then, even on your big teams, that means moving guys around. It means feeling fine, figuring out who is going to fill the the roles that are being. So it it. it the onus is is on making sure that you are doing the doing it the way you're supposed to be doing it. Mm-hmm. Like last week, they hit um, RFK racing for a is a hundred owner points, a hundred driver points, and a hundred thousand dollar fine. Ooh, jeez, okay. from uh, tampering with the uh, spec parts. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they hammered them last week. So. Again, see if you're gonna if you're gonna do something, that, and they're 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 treating everyone the same. It's they they didn't no no good. they're not they're no favorites no favoritism. That's, and that's oh, a good thing. that's a good thing yeah. that they're treating everybody equally and not just punishing the small teams and not punishing mm-hmm. large teams or vice versa. Yeah. They're just punishing large teams and not punishing the small teams. So no no they're nobody you're not getting away with anything right now yeah. not with the way that because because the <laughs> national has a lot riding on this new car. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of time and money spent on making this car a competitive race car and making it so that it's not just the money teams that are that are winning week in and week out. It's the onus the idea of building this new race car was to make sure was to for was to level the playing field so you couldn't just buy wins. 
So your Hendricks and your Gibbs weren't winning week in and week out. And that you actually had you they had put the onus on the on the drivers and the crews during during race weekend. It wasn't all about um tunnel time and, and just being able to spend out spend the rest of your competition. Right. Right. Well that's good. I mean at least they that, that way the they, they even the playing field for everybody. Ideally. That was the that was the goal. So that's why they don't want teams messing with the spec parts is because the idea is that everybody has the same equipment. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and it's, it, it's about the talent that you have. It's more about the driver now than more of the, than the car, right? Is that what, in retrospect? It's, it's about the driver, the crew, and, and, and the crew making the right calls during the race. It's not about, it's not about um, just, spent out spending the competition and building a better race car right i agree with that i think that's a good thing that they did that yeah there's a home run <laughs> i'm watching uh college baseball right now george is playing florida and ah. george just did a home run in the bottom of the first inning <laughs> um but um i don't know if i get yeah. that it's on. It's on ESPN here. I don't know if it's on ESPN. ESPN too. Yet. Oh, then, yeah. but then I get it then. Yeah. Yeah. ESPN um, too. ESPN. Yep. Okay. Um, I have one, and I haven't got a chance, guys, to read this article. So bear with me. Um, okay. It's about um, Chael Sonnen. Um, I guess he doesn't remember an alleged Las Vegas hotel attack. I don't know exactly. Huh. What ha- here? Let me read. I, I haven't got a yeah. chance to read this article yet, so let me read it to you guys, and you guys can give me your opinion on um, what happened. Because I, I didn't even I didn't hear anything about this. I, I um, it says, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I'm not 100 sure. It says wow. um, former UFC fighter and ESPN analyst Chael Sonnen told police that he doesn't remember the incident in a Las Vegas hotel last year that led to 11. Battery charges, according to the Las Vegas Review Journal, uh, Sonnen was charged with 11 counts of battery, including one felony battery by strangulation. Last week, mm. after he allegedly punched or kicked five different men in a lot in Las Vegas on December 18th, um, Sonnen told police that both he and his wife had taken Ambien and did not have memory of anything. He also apparently asked the police if everyone was okay multiple times. His wife Brittany told police. She was asleep the entire time per report. Um, it says Christopher and Julie Stulaplug filed a lawsuit against Sonnen on Friday, claiming that he punched him repeatedly without any uh, provocation at the Four Seasons Hotel. Sonnen was allegedly choking Christopher while Julie continued to yell and scream for help. Uh, he allegedly threw her against a light fixture and punched her in the face. Wow. Okay. This is more serious yeah. than I thought it was. Um, Sonnen was 31 and 17 throughout his UFC and Bellator career. He hasn't fought since 2019. Um, I, again, I don't remember hearing anything about that, but uh, it's, yeah, charges it's, are true. I mean, he's in a lot of trouble if those charges are true. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, again, he can say that. Him and his wife were both on Ambien, which you can say that the medication was the problem, but I don't, I don't know. I don't uh, know. Yeah. It sounds that's like an hard. excuse. That's, yeah, that's hard to. Uh, I mean, that sounds like an excuse. He's like, I don't remember. I was on Ambien. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe he has that. You know, some people have issues with with sleepwalking, and maybe mm. he. Uh, oh. he sleepwalking yeah. is one thing. Sleep is another. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because I've I've heard mm-hmm. I've seen YouTube videos and stuff that I, I watched a YouTube clip one time. And again, this is not anything to do with fighting people, but I watched right. a YouTube clip where this girl was sound asleep, mm-hmm. and her friend her friend was with her. Her friend woke up in the middle of the night. Right? She woke. She then woke up and wa- and looked at her eye to eye, and the girl never blinked one time. She just mm. stood there like possessed. And they said yeah. that they had to come and they shook her and then she woke up. 
but she was in right. like a freaking trance. I don't yeah. know if that's something that happened to him. Could but, be. I don't know. I don't know. It just sounds too suspicious, you know? Yeah. Um, they also say that if you, um, if somebody gets sleepwalking, wake them up. Very true. Yep. You don't wake them up. No. Yes, wake them up. You do wake them up. No, I thought it was dangerous to wake up a sleepwalker. No, no, because they can hurt themselves because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, you. They've been. You want to wake them up? Yeah. yeah. You wake them up. Yep. I always thought it was the opposite. No, oh, because man. because a sleepwalking person is not conscious of what they're doing, and they can hurt themselves because they don't have any idea of what they're doing. I've heard stories Lou, of people walking in traffic, sleepwalking. I've they heard walked that out of their apartment and, or house mm -hmm. and walked right into the middle of the road because they don't know what they're doing. They're not cognizant of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You're not, you're they have find no idea that they're even awake. Yeah, because I had an experience with that with uh, myself one time. Well, I wasn't a sleep barker, but one of my sister's friends actually went into my room and next thing I'm like, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> How this happened? Yeah. You, you, want, you want to be gentle. You want to gently bring them Bring them back to consciousness, but yeah, you definitely want to wake them up as, as, as quickly and as gently as possible because you don't want them right you, because they, it can you can have the, the a flinch reaction where they can attack attack you they can smack the shit out of you because they didn't you know you startled them awake so you want yeah. to be as gentle and, and and um right you want to ease them back to consciousness but yeah you definitely want to get them awake because what what can happen is it's something they can hurt themselves because they have no idea they you know, fall down the stairs or because they're, they're in their, they're yeah. in the dream and in the dream, they're walking down the road and then bam, they're bum, 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 bum. Yep. Very dangerous. So yeah, definitely. If you, if somebody is sleepwalking, you definitely want to wake them up. So again, we, I, again, if, if the charges what? are legit, yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, yeah. Those are serious. I'll, uh, I'll you know, keep my nose to the grindstone about this one. Yeah. And, um, we'll follow, we'll follow up on that later on. We'll follow up on, okay. on that. Um, I have a, I have oh. um, something that else I wanted to share. Let's see if I let's see something here. Well, we can do this. It looks like the U.S. men's soccer team did qualify for the World Cup. They yeah. did. Despite their loss to Co despite their loss to Costa Rica, they did qualify. Well, here's the thing. They had the goal differential, and the only way they were going to be, you know, not on that qualifying is they would lose by at least six goals or more. And there was no way that was going to happen. I mean, yeah, the U.S. is a long way in soccer. There was no way we were going to lose six to nothing for Costa Rica. So it was a 98% chance that we were going to, you know, uh, get in. I didn't say we were going to win it, but, you know, it was a good chance. You can't win it if you don't win in this. Yeah. Can can actually can you guys name the year the last time they did qualify for a World Cup? Wasn't that long ago? Back in 20, 2014. 2014, eight years ago, they qualified for the World Cup. Yep, that was the last. They did not. I think 2014 was like two years ago. Yeah, how did all that time go? Um. Yes. Yeah, so they they lost two nothing to Costa Rica, um, last night, but they still were like like. Uh, Lou said, due to the goal differential, they had to lose. They had to lose by six goals or more, not to qualify for. Mm. Well, they would automatically qualify. They had to play in a playoff uh, matchup against. Uh, really, okay. and if like you lost that, then it'd be curtains for you. Um, <laughs> you can't win it if you don't make it. Yes, right. correct. correct. But, no, the I, games, I, but in their fourteen games uh, in this. Um, well, free term, we want to call it. They were, they had seven wins, three losses, and four draws. So not bad. No, not terrible. Not no, bad. No. Is the World Cup again? Is it later this year? Yes. Or is it? November. Okay. What's November. in Qatar? So it's every it's in Qatar. Year. Yeah. yeah. But in the summer, it's too. It's too. It's like a growing up in the play out there in that time of year. Right. So they set up for the uh, cooler months. So instead of being a boiling oven, you'll be in the frozen tundra. Where's uh, where is it this year? Qatar. Oh, good God! Yeah, you can't play that in the summer. No, they would die. Yeah. <laughs> they would yeah. die in that so, country. Yeah. Really that freezing to death. That had to have been twenty twenty. Must have been twenty 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 
right before the um right before the world ended when that player had the heart attack. He came back. I mean, did he really? That player came back. He made his debut the other day for Portugal, I think is the country he's mm, originally from. Cool. Yeah. But he did make his appearance the other day for the first time since his heart I, it happened on the field, if I remember, right? Yeah. He yeah. had a heart attack right I, on the I field. Remember, yeah. I remember yeah. me and me and Mandy had gone to go get lunch because I was spending a week with them. And um we were uh we were we had gone into the restaurant to get some food and we sat down and we we're talking, chatting, and I, I it was the uh stadium was real quiet. Like and I didn't know what was going on. And yeah. I found out later on that day that he had had a heart attack on the on the field. Right there on the field. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. You're talking about the Euro you know, Cup. I, 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 you know, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, Euro Cup. Yeah, he, I guess uh, he, 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 he um, did come back. He did come back. Yeah. It's crazy to think that, you know, and these guys, you know, he probably in the best shape of his life, right? You know, soccer player runs all day, every day, works out, eats uh, a healthy diet, and yet he still has a heart attack at, you know, 20 well, something. He was immune, you know. Well, heart attacks can happen to anybody, any of us, at any age. Yeah. That's what's it's scary about. Crazy. Yeah. And it was still crazy to think that, you know, somebody who's in shape and eats right and exercises has a heart attack and somebody who smokes for 40 years and drinks like a fish and eats cheeseburgers there for every meal and they'll die at 88 from natural yep. causes yep. you know it's, it's just crazy go figure yep. you never know you know well like you said you never i mean you know look at pistol pete another guy that you know died right? on the court. you were you know yeah. something like that you know people Did Pete Lavish die on the court he retired the year before he died. Oh, did he? Okay, I could be wrong then. Okay. He, he, his, he was like, his dad died at 40, and he wanted to live and do it. He wanted to live longer, so he retired, and he was dead within the year. Yeah, I mean, stuff like that, like you think, I mean, <laughs> athletes, you know, like you said, they're right. healthy, and they eat healthy, they exercise every day, and like you just said, yeah, like, somebody... Like it's not like it's it's not like these we're talking about some guy in the 40s mm -hmm. who there whose training regiment was you know a hot dog and a beer yeah yeah you know his definition of eating healthy was only having one beer <laughs> you know right <laughs> i was it was funny i i want to switch topics we didn't talk about i saw this clip from kobe and he was talking about um he's talking about back-to-back -back games you know be on the road and having a, a, a game, you know, back-to-back -back games. He's like, you know, I go out and I, you know, I drink with him. I was like, yeah. He's just like, when he's like. Mm -hmm. Adam freeze up there. Yeah. Like, no, we, <laughs> my internet is being stupid tonight. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, been uh, so anyway, to finish what I was saying. So Kobe is like, the guys would want him to go out. And he's like, no, no, we need a good rest. And he's like, he's like, come on, come on. And he's like, okay, fine. I'm going to hang out with you. And, you know, I don't mean, he's like, I drank with him. I hung out with him. He said, and the next morning, 5 o'clock. And they're all like, what the? And he's like, I, I hung out with you. Now you can come hang out with me. And um, so, you know, take them down to the, you know, they go work out and do drills. And then they have their team meetings. And they play the, the night. They, 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 like, Twice a, twice a year, like at the beginning of the year, you need the young guys that want to go and you know enjoy the town and uh, and yeah that yeah that that stopped pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Because with you know Kobe Kobe was definitely one of those guys that it was it was his job was basketball his life was basketball right yeah. yep and, you know and that not, you know they, they 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 didn't call him the Mamba for nothing right. Mm. Well, there's what, what is what is what is there last? What there's like six games, seven games left. Yes, this? seven games, I believe. I was, I, watching, I was watching the Suns Warriors game last night, so mm. that was. 
I there, I mean, I was watching the Celtics Heat. That that's going to be a good matchup with those two teams. I think it's, I think it's probably the most compelling matchup of round one. Yes. Um, let me. Yeah. And the Lakers are currently outside looking in. Correct. Am I correct me if I'm uh, wrong? They're ten. Eleven. Are they eleventh now? Yes. Yes. I thought, saw, I thought I saw this afternoon that they were still ten. No, it's eleventh now. Let me see real quick what the uh, standings are. Um, it usually will pop up the playoff bracket. I'll be able to yeah. Show the uh, – here we go. All right. So, currently, as of right now, they have the Lakers as 10 against the Pelicans. Oh, okay. So, they do have um, – it is a New Orleans, uh, L.A. in the 9-10 game, 9-10 seed. The 7-8 seed will be the Timberwolves and Clippers. Um, and then, obviously, okay. Phoenix is the number one overall seed in the east, in the west. Then you have Golden State. Denver is the 4-5. Dallas, Utah is the 3-6. Really and then Memphis will get the winner of – will get the winner of we'll get the, we'll get the – the the seventh the – seventh, the winnering of the Minnesota L.A. series goes to play in Memphis – the loser then goes to play the winner of the Pelican Laker matchup, and then that winner of that game goes to play Phoenix. So that's how it's the winner of playing Phoenix. Yeah, that's yeah. So that's I good. know. So who? I mean, do you who out of those four out of those four teams you guys see going? Who who do you see winning the seven eight? Do you see it the the Timberwolves or do you see the Clippers? I'm going to say. That's what I was thinking. I kind of, I you know, it's one of those things that could go either way. Okay. It could. You say Minnesota? I yeah, I think Minnesota. Okay. And then who do you like in the Pelicans-Lakers series? Depends on who's healthy. Okay. Okay. You know the way I see it, the way the Lakers are playing. I don't know if they're gonna have enough to get to get past it. I'm going. I'm going go and upset and say the Pelicans. I don't and- even know if the Lakers are gonna even make that game. Anthony yeah. Davis, Anthony Davis is coming back from what I heard. So I don't know when. I think they said Wednesday of this upcoming week. Okay. So I that's it's at uh, that point it could be too late. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it could be very you too know, late. It could already be too late. I, I don't know. I don't think that I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's I think- see let's see real quick, guys, how all right. So the Spurs only sit about a game and a half or a half a game, half a game outside of that final spot. So the Spurs are the team that could be in there and yeah. the Lakers not. So it's a half a game difference between the two teams. And LeBron's out tonight. I think and he, and he set out last night too, did he not? Right. Or, They're a half game up on, L- on San, San, Antonio. Uh, San Antonio. Correct. Yep. Yep. No, I didn't see if Davis was out too. Well, we don't know who's playing in Memphis and who's playing in Phoenix, but we how about who do you guys like in the um Golden State Denver series, the four five matchup? I'm gonna go with Warriors. Warriors, okay. And the other one Golden is State. The other one is um, Dallas in Utah. I'm going to go Upset City here. I'm going to go Utah. The Jazz, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go the Jazz, too. Jazz? Okay. It's, really right. a tough one. it's a tough one to decide. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The Eastern Conference is the 9-10 game is Charlotte and Atlanta. And okay. the 7-8 game, 7-8 series is Cleveland and Brooklyn. So who do you guys like in the Charlotte Atlanta series? Atlanta, Atlanta, Charlotte, Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte. Uh, Cleveland and Brooklyn Nets. Nets. Clay, uh, Cleveland. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, we want Miami's the top seed. Uh, Milwaukee wow. is the number two seed. So the four five game is Boston Chicago. Ooh. That's gonna be a hell of a series. Hell yes, it's going to be. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're a four pitch walk. Um, the uh, the and then you have uh, Philly, Toronto, 
is the three six matchup in the East. No, I like Philly. Philly? Okay. Philly. Yeah. Who do you guys like in the Boston Chicago series? Boston. Boston. Yeah. Boston and six. Okay. Okay. I'll say five. Boston and five. Okay. All right. That's I mean, again, we'll have to wait and see it. Yeah. Yeah. Ask me again next mm-hmm. big more when the season's down to one game and we'll Yeah, we'll find out when we know when we know a lot more of what's right. Right. Um, we can actually, if you guys want to, since we're on this topic of basketball, we can shift to the yeah. NCAA because both the both tournaments are now in their fi- respected Final Fours. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also something else I saw yep. um, that I wanted to bring up. Um, I guess Penny Hardaway is in trouble uh, for. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, level one violations in yeah. Memphis. Uh, we'll have. I'm gonna. I haven't read that article either. So let me. I'll bring it up here in a few seconds. But the men's final four obviously has North Carolina versus Duke. So we get to see that game again. I wish that game would have been in the finals. That would have been better if it would have ended up being that. Yeah. And Villanova and Kansas. And I'll. We'll do like we do in college. College football here, guys. We'll go by the lines and stuff. So the Kansas Villanova game has Kansas as a four and a half point under uh, favorite, excuse me, the over mm-hmm. under being 133 and a half. So what is your guys' take between Villanova and Kansas? Well, Villanova had a major injury one of their players, and that's going to be a big blow to them. So okay. uh, I'm going to have to go with Kansas. Kansas. And I'm going to say it's going to be under 133. Uh, agreed. Okay. So Kansas in the under. Rock okay. Rock Jay Hawk. I had the Hawks winning it all from the beginning anyway. And, of course, the other game is uh, Duke, North Carolina. Wow. Duke is a four-point favorite with the over-under being 151 points. God damn. Where are they getting these this, points? This one is going to be a tough one, despite the fact that Carolina's only eight seed. These two teams know each other. They're mm. very the conference. They're yeah. rivals. They hate each other with a passion. Mm. But – and. Um, but and this is going to be Coach King's last run, whether yeah. he goes, you know whether he goes to the finals or not. I mean, these two are going to be you know it's going to be a war on Saturday night. Blood, everything. This is going to be the more intriguing matchup than see even the Kansas uh, Villanova game. I expect it to be a high scoring of a high scoring affair and uh, over the uh, what was it again one fifty one fifty one was the uh, over under. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's gonna be, it's gonna go even higher. Wow. So you're talking you're talking 75, 75, somewhere like something like that. I'm talking about 84, 480, something like that. Yeah. That's a lot of points in a basketball game. Yeah, but we're talking about Duke here, though. That's true. That's true. I think think Duke rallies for one more. So you got Duke? Okay. Who do you like, Lou, in that game? I got to give it to Duke. Duke. I think I think they rally for Coach K one more time. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they get it done on. I don't know if they get it done on Monday night, but they're gonna win. They're gonna win this this one. I like I like I like Kansas guys in the first one, and mm-hmm. the game the Duke North Carolina game. I'm hoping maybe I'll be able to watch it while I'm bowling on Saturday night, or I'll be watching my phone a little bit, paying attention to the score. Um, even though the phone, the picture's on the phone, that's not that good. No. Um, but I will say that, again, I think it, it'll be tight. I I have yeah. to give the give the line to Duke, obviously, because it's Coach K's last run. I think they're going to win it, try to win it for him. Um, they'll play Kansas mm-hmm. in the finals. I don't know if they'll beat the Jayhawks, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to get yeah. there because they know it's Coach K's last and you, yeah. you know what? They might just ride that momentum all the way through to a national championship and let him right. go out, let him go out on a high. You know, let him go out on top. Mm-hmm. You know, so that definitely, guy, definitely. Because really, if you think about it, they got their asses kicked by North Carolina in that in the in the finale, right? His last yeah. regular yeah. season yeah. team. Yeah. And ever yeah. since then, that team has had a fire under their asses, and that's why. Yeah. Now they're going to yeah. get revenge. Now they can get revenge on North Carolina when it counts. Now it counts. Now. You knock them out. Now you don't have to worry about them now until next season. Yeah, uh, but, you, but they they you, 
the Duke North Carolina matchup is like Ohio State Michigan. They hate yeah. each other. Yeah, they the despise fire each fire. other. Chapel Hill and Durham despise each other. Tobacco. Yep. Road. So yep. They. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the best. One of the best matchups in college sports overall. Yeah. When, when it comes to college basketball, it is. Uh, it's. <laughs> it's. Yeah. North Carolina. When it comes to that, yeah, it's the ultimate um, college basketball rivalry game. Correct. The women's final four. Uh, I think they play. Are they play tomorrow night? Right? Is that when yes, they play? Sounds right. Yeah. Tomorrow night. Um. Now they. It is Stanford UConn in one of the games. Yeah. That I can remember. And let me let me pull up the. Uh, and then Joe and Nova and somebody. Or no, Louisville. Really Louisville and South Louisville Carolina. And Carolina. Pretty pretty the other one is. Let me see what they uh, what the uh, the betting gods in in Vegas have for these games. Okay, so the first matchup is at seven right. o'clock. Two number one seeds playing against each other, and that's Louisville, South Carolina. They have the Gamecocks as a eight and a half point favorite, with the over under being one hundred nineteen and a half in women's college basketball. So. That's what they have. Gamecocks win, and it's going to be under. Gamecocks points under. Okay. All right. The other matchup is UConn versus Stanford. Stanford is a one-and-a-half point favorite with the over-under being 128-and-a-half. Huskies. Huskies. The over, okay. Stanford in the under. Stanford, I think the the way I think Stanford might beat UConn is because they have, as as um, their coach said on, um, what show was that? Uh, pardon the interruption last night that they have too much length. They can use their length. They have a lot of tall girls. UConn doesn't yeah. match up very well, so we'll see. I'm going to take Stanford in the under. I'm going to take Carolina uh, in the uh, for the points too. So I think it'll be. Stanford, South Carolina in the finals uh, for women's college basketball. But let me bring up, guys, uh, let me bring up two things, because here is what ESPN analyst Jay Billis says, what the state of men's basketball is. Again, I haven't read this article. I just popped up this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So let me read you what, what he – it says, the final four is the deciding weekend of the national championship in college basketball. And although the conclusion is paramount, the event is far more than that. On this fabulous weekend when the game crowns a champion, there is a large gathering of the year in fans, media, and the game's luminaries. In addition to a coronation, the Final Four is a mass celebration. Hmm. The celebration of game and all that we love it. There have never, There's never been a bad Final Four, although some are better than others. There's always great stories, fabulous competition, and there is always a worthy champion that will be long to be remembered. The Final Four is idiot proof, and thank goodness for that. <laughs> That's good. I like that line. The, this year, the NCAA tournament provided that it always seems to provide great stories and competition and a good feeling to all. We have returned to normalcy with fans in the stands, loud crowd, cheerleaders saving the day when a ball gets stuck on the backboard. The miracle of St. Peter's and the final weekend of Blue Bloods, Duke and North Carolina, to fight it out for the title. We have the last time for Coach K to win a title, the first time for Hubert Davis to win a title, and other chances for Bill Self to win multiple titles, and for Jay Wright to join the elite company by winning three or more titles. Every Final Four team has won multiple championships, making this one of the most royal Final Fours of all time. There is little to complain about. Is there much to complain about with those four teams? Mm -hmm. I can't see too much to complain about with the four teams that are in there. So, um, I like I like what Jay says. I I respect his opinion a lot. He is one of the guys. Yeah, me too. On the four letter network, that I do value his opinion a lot, especially when it comes to college basketball. He's a former player, so mm -hmm. I mean, got to take his take his word for it. Um, yeah. You know, when it comes to stuff like that. So I, you know, I like the fact that he wrote the article and how, and that it's true. I mean, you look at it, we do have the Blue Bloods in Duke and North, in North Carolina. They, you know, they've been there, done that many times before. Um, so 
And again, you know, Kansas sure. is back there. Kansas is a tough team too. Um, you know, so the surprise team would be anything would be Villanova, and Nova's won a couple of national championships too. Yep, 2016. So, yeah. So oh, that was a, yeah, the last second too. <laughs> I remember that, that. was crazy. I don't know why. Yeah. 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 Okay. Game was tonight, was the game was online. I, oh my god! I, I just like almost dropped dead. Mm. Let me read to you guys the level one violations against Memphis oh, yeah. head coach Anthony Hardaway. Um, let's see here. Penny Hardaway was named in multiple NCAA level one and level two notice of allegations against the University of Memphis, according to documents obtained by the Daily. Membian, I'm, if I mispronounced that, I'm sorry for all of you who live in mm -hmm. Memphis, Tennessee, and the Memphis Commercial Appeal. Per the reports, Memphis is facing four level one and two level two violations among seven violations in total. Mm -hmm. Level one is the most serious of the NCAA four-tier violation structure. Hardaway, the men's basketball coach, is charged specifically in one level one and two level two violations in the NOA that stems from an NCAA investigation that took place from May 2019 to February 2021. Um, according to the reports, after months of requests, Hardaway failed to demonstrate that he promoted an atmosphere of compliance with the men's basketball program. The scope of the violations against the program, including charges related of to lack of institutional control and failure to monitor while nothing while no, excuse me, while noting head coach responsibility, the specific nature of alleged violations in a heavy radicated NOA is not clear. Hardaway is a former star player at Memphis and a four-time NBA All-Star. He started coaching in 2018 at Memphis. He secured a pair of top two recruiting classes that included multiple NBA lottery prospects. James Wiseman was the latest of one, the number two pick in the 2022 NBA draft. He just played three games during his freshman season in Memphis. He declared him ineligible in November of that season after his family yeah. reportedly received money from Hardaway to help cover moving expenses from Nashville to Memphis in 2017. Yeah. So it looks like this is all stemming back from what he did for Wiseman. Most of yeah. this seems to be. Um, it says university wrote that it is not permitted to comment because of the ongoing process. And they were invited by the commercial appeal on Saturday. The facts do not demonstrate a lack of control, a failure to monitor, a failure to cooperate, or a lack of responsibility. Responsibility finding the NOA contains no specific facts and specific facts that are imperative for the resolution of this matter. Uh, since Memphis filed its response, Hardaway coached the Tigers to their first NCAA tournament appearance since he took the coaching job. Memphis advanced to the second round as a number nine seed. Where it lost number one, Gonzaga last week. Memphis ended the season with a 20, 20, 22 and 11 record. Um, I don't really know what is going to come out of this. Are they going to fire him? I don't know. Uh, it's, I hear some of the comments. It says, so Memphis will have to fire the assistant to the video coach specials and not be allowed to practice on the second Tuesday of an odd number of months. That's a stupid comment. Well, I don't. I don't really know what is going to happen. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I we'll have uh, to wait and see what the uh, what the outcome of the investigation is. Yeah, I I will say the very first USF men's basketball game I went to, they played Memphis, and I got to see him. So that was cool to see Penny Hardaway on the sidelines <laughs> as a college right. coach. Yeah. As a college coach, but yeah, he he was there. Uh, uh, coaching. So I'll, again, that'll be one of those stories we can kind of keep track of and see where anything comes up in the next couple weeks or so. We'll find out what's going on, but good luck to the eight teams that remain four teams in men's four teams in women's teams. Good mm -hmm. luck this weekend to them um, moving forward. Uh, let me bring in golf talk because there is a rumor circulating yes. at Augusta National. Um, and that rumor is that Tiger 
could be playing in the Masters. Uh, there is a speculation. Be remarkable. He did play a practice round. Roy McIlroy has come out and said that he wants to see Tiger there. I don't know, though, if he can handle walking four rounds on that repaired leg, though. I, I, I just – No, he did 18 today. Uh, but, but 18 today. Now, that's not doing – Where's he going to be at tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's yeah. not doing 72 holes, getting up tomorrow no. and doing it all over again. You know yeah, what I mean? Tomorrow. If he does another 18 tomorrow – and he doesn't, and he's not feeling it. He'll probably play. Yeah. But if he wakes up tomorrow morning and his legs the size of a basketball, yeah. Then you got a problem. Yeah. Because but if he's he's if well, look, it's bad that Mickelson's not going to be in. I mean, not having Tiger that would make it a very dull Masters. Well, the Masters starts next week. Next Thursday right. is they they tee it up at Augusta, so yes. um, we can talk about that next Thursday right. during the first round. Um. You can always, you know, you can, you can always enter on, enter in, play a couple holes, feel like whether decide whether he's feeling good or not, and withdraw if he's not feeling good. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it's not like he's, you know, it's not like he doesn't have the money for it. Yeah, he, does. he doesn't need that. <laughs> he, he has no. no problem with that. No, that it's not like it's not like if he enters this and he does, you know, he doesn't make the cut. I, I, I would have to say I agree with Lou. If he does play, if he does come out after this injury and does play in the Masters, that would be cool. Um, I, I Either way, I think it's still going to be sold out. I know it won't be the same without him and Phil, but there's a lot of young guys on the tour, you know, that will make it. Now, again, I know those two draw the most anyway. Other than maybe Brooks, Kep, Brooks Kepka and Bryson DeChambeau, they might draw just to see how they react to each other. But, right. I mean, <laughs> Here we you, got, go. you got Hideki, Mat, you know, Matsuyama, who won last year. Right. Justin Thomas is a good player. Dustin Johnson's a good player. Right. Yeah. Yes. Spieth's another one who's yeah. you know, been lingering for, for a long time. Uh, Xander Shoffley's another name that you can throw out there. And I don't even know the international guys. I'm just naming Americans because usually on the PJ Tour. That's that American? Uh, no, I mean like McElroy's European. Right. Uh, you know, you got Tommy Fleetwood, uh guys like that that can can also play that played well. Yeah. Not against, uh, you know, next Shepley's Australian, isn't he? I'm sorry? Shepley's what? Uh Australian. Andrew Shoffley's American. Shoffley's he is American. American. Oh. He's American. Don't sound American. Shoffley. Shoffley is American. You I mean you have Adam Scott, you know, you got a bunch of guys that are the European and outside of the United States. Right. Again, the, I'll, I'll have to see. I'll, I'll have to look that up. Let me see real quick if they've announced what uh, what Hideki is having for the dinner. For his meal. Yeah, let me see if they've – yeah, hang on a sec. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Maybe it's out. Let me see if they have this out. Okay, let's see here. Just curious. Now, this is okay. This is from golf.com. This is the best Masters dinner, best Masters champion dinner menu of all time. <laughs> okay. So here we go. I'm going to read these off to you guys. This is this okay. is golf. Charles Schwartzel, who won the Masters in 2011. So this is this. He had chilled seafood bar, jumbo shrimp, lobster cocktail, crab meat, crab legs, and oysters. Ooh. Jeez, that sounds good. <laughs> that yeah. sounds good. Yeah, um, good Adam Scott had Australian Wagyu beef, Mon Morton Bay lobster, sautéed spinach and onions, cream mashed potatoes. Ooh, that sounds good, too. I like the sautéed fish. That sounds good, too. VJ Singh had seafood Tom kind. I remember he's from, v uh, from Fiji, so that's kind of like his. Yeah. His thing. Um, he had Lache sorbet, which that's a, it's for dessert. That was dessert. Uh, but those, okay, so that doesn't tell me. Let me see what. Let's see here. I want to see if it'll tell me what is being served by Hideki because he is the one who gets to host it this year. So let's see here. 
Yeah, see, these are just some of the better ones they've had. Um, Tiger Woods had cheeseburger, grilled steak sandwich, french fries, strawberry and vanilla milkshakes, and strawberry shortcake when he won the, in 1998. Not bad. Mm. That's pretty pretty normal American. <laughs> pretty normal American thing. Um, it says right here, guys, that the tradition started in 1952. In the early years, the main course consisted of beef, chicken, or seafood. However, with an influx of international winners, the meal now reflects the champion's individual tastes. So as as I've mentioned, they change it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Depending on who won and what they what they feel. I guess it, guys, it has not. They have not listed. Let's see. It's already. Okay, so he's okay. Let's see what this says. Let's see if he's he's already dealing with the two thousand two decisions about Augusta. So let's see if he's mentioned anything. Matsum has a menu to plan for the twenty twenty two Masters. Okay, um, I'm a little worried. He admitted, I don't know if everyone is really like sushi or not, but I'm going to check with some people and to get their advice and what they like, what they think. There's a lot of really good food from Japan, a lot of some of the best beef in the world. So I'm thinking about that. So I, again, guys, it hasn't, they haven't determined what he's going to have yet. Yeah. He hasn't when I know, the menu yet. No. When I know we'll, we'll know next week because they'll have the champions enter the night before on Wednesday. Right. We'll know next week. What, what has been served. So right. I always find that cool. That you get to pick, you get great. to do dinner. So it doesn't seem yeah. like, like, you know, anything that you want that, you know, that is for your liking, you know, obviously. And I'm sure that you have people that if you pick an all, you know, beef and chicken and stuff, the people that are vegetarian, I'm sure there's a vegetarian, you know, dish that they can be yeah. served by the yeah. master chefs and stuff like that. So. Um, but yeah, uh, the other tour, the LPJ tour started their first major of the year today. Um, they started their first major, um, the Chevron championship, which the winner $5 million. That's pretty good for a women's tournament. Yeah. Uh, it's good for any tournament. Wow. Yeah. Um, Judy Rankin will be announcing her final tournament as an as an analyst oh okay. so our last one um here are now let me pull up the reader board here now bear with me guys because i follow the lpj tour somewhat but some of these names i don't know who they are so okay bear with me um i'll kind of give you the people that i do know from watching um so the leaderboard right now, there is two ladies at minus six. Um, Jennifer Cucho and Ming Jing Li. Uh, you have a Australian and a American that top the leaderboard. Uh, Lydia Ko is only two shots back. I know who she is. Anna Norquist, I know who she is. She's from Sweden. Um, she is four under par. Lexi Thompson is three under par. She's a couple shots back. I know who she is. I just don't watch enough LG LPJ tour golf to know all of these girls, but it seems to be a pretty good yeah. pretty good to come. I played uh high school golf Ooh. against her. <laughs> so that was cool. Um yeah, there I mean there's a bunch of people at plus one and even par and stuff like that, but this is the first LPGA major of the year. Um yeah. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, this is, uh, you know, they, they're they trying to get more bigger pay for their players and stuff per tournament. So, obviously, what you got to do with that is you got to draw more sponsors. And if you can do that, then you make more money because that's what the mm -hmm. yeah. A-Tour does. So, I mean, that's how you that's how you draw more money, you know, at that point. So, but that is all my golf news that I had. Um, we can talk hockey if you guys want to. I'm sure they yeah. 
the rankings have changed a little bit. Um, let me see. What, what did I have here? I had an article about the about hockey. Let's see here. Oh, the N- the NHL salary cap um, is rising to eighty two and a half million next season. Mm, so wow. they have uh, the NHL informed its general manager that the salary cap will increase by one million to a total of eighty two point five million beginning next season. Cool. Uh, the league has operated with the cap ceiling at eighty one and a half since the two thousand nineteen twenty season. Obviously, that was before the world ended. Um, Correct. Mm-hmm. With the league and the NHLPA renegotiating the CBA in June of 2020, it was reported that part of the agreement called for the cap to remain close to 81 and a half million for three seasons. Ultimately, it did fluctuate from that figure, uh, did not at all. Um, so that is how it'll be. It looks like so going back to two, so what do you guys think the salary cap was in the 2005 2006 season? Give me uh, a figure. Man. 65 million. You said 65 million? 62. Mm-hmm. How about 39 was the wow. salary cap in 2005, 2006? So you go ahead and say it's it's gone up almost almost 50 million in a matter, what is it, about $43 million between yeah. now within 14 years. So yeah. it's gone up about a million dollars a year from here on so since 2005. It jumped in 2006, 2007, it jumped to 44 million. So it's jumped up in, hmm. it got, it went from 64.3 million in 2013 to 2014 to 69 million. That's a big jump. That's a, that's a pretty big jump. But yeah, it stayed. This is the last year, it'll be at 81 and a half. So it's going up to 82 million next season, which will be good. I mean, yeah. Caps work. Obviously, baseball won't ever adopt one, but in some leagues, salary caps work. <laughs> Works pretty well for football. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Uh, yep. It's all set up. Okay, so let's look now. Holy crap, Boston's up over New Jersey eight to one. It's awful. It's Damn. awful. Holy cow, my God. What's going on in Jersey right now? Holy moly, donut shop. Well, they're awful. <laughs> all right. Way. This is the worst game so I've ever seen. Here the time. Is, we all know, I think, we, I think we've discussed this in the past that the Eastern Conference is basically blocked. I mean, I don't think yeah. anything's really yeah. going to change. Um, Carolina, the Rangers, Pittsburgh, and the Metro, Florida, Tampa Bay, Toronto, and the Atlantic, and the two wild card teams are. Boston and Washington currently, and Columbus can't catch them because Columbus is 15 points out right now behind the Capitals. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, Colorado is the first team to reach 100 points this season. Um, It's them, Minnesota, and St. Louis in the Central. Calgary, L.A., and Edmonton in the Pacific. And the wild card is this is where it gets kind of dicey. Um, you have Nashville at 82 points, Vegas at 78. Dallas is only one point behind Vegas. Winnipeg is only two points behind Vegas. And Vancouver is only five points behind Vegas. So those are all within reachable distances. Five is getting a little close, but. Especially as late as we're getting in the year. Right, right. So, I mean, Vancouver's still there. Past them, you know, San Jose is too far out, but yeah, you have basically five teams bidding for two spots in retro. Right. Um, there are a lot of people, and I mean, even my roommate even came out and told me that he would be happy to see the Knights miss the playoffs. Interesting, uh huh. <laughs> Gee, what does that tell you? The uh, goodwill is going off. Yeah, yeah. It, with the decisions that they, I guess, have made within the organization and stuff like that, they have decided, you know, that they will get what's coming to them. Obviously, yeah. if they do miss the postseason, it'll be the first time in franchise history that they missed it because they've made it every year since they, the team started. started. 
they got to the Stanley Cup Finals in in year one. So there you go. Yeah. They. Uh, so we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. I think coming down the stretch. Let's see. Uh, we still got a month of month of hockey left. Yeah. Um, because I see 68, 69. We got what 15, 15 games left for some teams. You know, yeah. thirteen yeah. games. Well, left remember the, uh, with the Olympics and uh, the COVID outbreak that yeah. happened. Yeah. So that's what pushed it back. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like I said, Boston is up eight to one in the second period over Jersey. Toronto is up five to three over Winnipeg as they start the third period. The Panthers are up three nothing over Chicago in the third. The Islanders are up three to two over Columbus in the third period. Carolina is up three nothing over Montreal in the third period. Uh, Pittsburgh and Minnesota are tied at one at the end of one. San, uh, San Jose and Colorado go later. LA and Calgary go later. And Anaheim and Dallas also. Actually, they're getting actually they're dropping the puck in the Sharks Avalanche game and in the um, Kings Flames game. The puck is being dropped as we speak. Uh, the Dallas a- Anaheim game is going to start till another hour from now. Um, and then there are games tomorrow. But yeah, so. The Eastern Conference is basically all sewn up. It's the West that's still up in the air for the National Hockey League. Um, which do you guys, which which conference would you consider stronger out of the two? East. The East? You said the East? Lou? I think I would say, um, yeah, I think I'd say the East. The Eastern Conference? Okay. Uh, I think the, West, the, West, the West is top heavy. Yes, that's true. True. I think overall the East is better, but the top of the West is really, really tough. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, we'll jump to baseball and then we'll end with football because there's been some uh, developments in the NFL as there always seems to be. I was just uh, thinking that in the, uh, the new cycle always- never ends for the NFL. Yeah. I'll, I'll save that until the end. Yeah. Um, I got this off of MLB.com. These are the top 10 best lineups coming into the 2022 season. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys the teams, and I'll give you guys the names that they listed. All right. So number one, obviously, I think we can all conclude that it's the Dodgers. So it's Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner, Max Muncy, Will Smith, Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, Chris Taylor, and A.J. Pollock. That's a lineup, all right. So that's mm-hmm. the, that's the Dodgers lineup. Um, number two would be the Toronto Blue Jays, and they have George Springer, Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., uh, Tayscar Hernandez, Matt Chapman, um, Ordiels Guerrero Jr., uh, Kevion Biggio, Danny Jensen, and Ramil Tapia. Uh, bear with me if I'm pronouncing those names incorrectly. Yeah. But um, that's the second strong, second best lineup. You know, for me, I thought they is a Jerry Springer and Boba Fett. Oh. <laughs> uh, the third one is the White Sox. You have Tim Anderson, uh, Yamakata, Jose uh, Abreu, Abreu, Aloy Jimenez, Yasmi Grandel, Lewis Robert, Andrew Vaughn, Gavin Sheets, and Josh Harrison. I don't Solid. even know. Out there's some names on that roster. I don't even know. So that's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, the Braves uh, have Eddie Rosario, Dansby Swanson, Matt Olson, who replaced Freddie Freeman, Marcel Zuna, Austin Riley, Ozzie Ablaeus, Adam Duvall, Travis Darno, who used to be with the Rays, and Alex Dickerson <laughs> of the Braves. Um, the Yankees are as follows. Um, Anthony Rizzo, Aaron Judge, Joey Gallo, uh, John Carlos Stanton, Josh Donaldson, Gabriel Torres, Aaron Hicks, Isaiah Kinar Falafa. Am I pronouncing that right, Lou? Yeah. Yankee so. fan. Okay. And Kyle Higazaka. I'm, I don't know. That's, I the, say, yeah. that's the catcher um, in that lineup. Uh, they have the Red Sox at six. Kiki Hernandez, Trevor Story, Rafael Devers, Xander Bogarts, 
J.D. Martinez, Alex Verdugo, Bobby Dalbeck, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Christian Vasquez. Uh, number seven is the Phillies. They have Kyle Schwarber, J.T. Ramuto, Bryce Harper, Nick Castellanos, uh, Royce Hawkins, D.D. Gregorius, uh, John Sugra, Alex Alec Braun, Matt Verling. Again, I've, their names on that roster, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they... They show us by the end of the year who they are. The Astros have Jose Altuve, Michael Brantley, Alex Bregman, Jordan Alvarez, Yoe Gorel, Kyle Tucker, Shaz McCormick, Jeremy Pena, and Martin Maldonado. That's their catcher. And then, let's see, the Rays are on here as well. Brandon Lau, Wander Franco, Randy Arozarena, Austin Meadows, Yanni Diaz, G-Man Choi, Mike Zanino, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Mar- Manuel Margot. And the last one is the Angels. They have Otani, Mike Trout, Anthony Rendon, Jared Walsh, Max Stasi, Brandon Marsh, Joe Adele, Andrew Vel- Vasquez, and David Fletcher. Those are the top 10 that they mentioned in MLB.com. Do you guys think that those guys belong there? Is there somebody that they didn't put on that list that should be on there? Hmm. Any any opinion? Maybe the twins. The twins? Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, Minnesota is going to be tough this year. But no, other than that, I really don't think. I think they kind of have it pretty much spot on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I think there obviously we we all know now with with Freeman going to the Dodgers that that's got to be the most stacked that's be a big game for them. Stack lineup, I think, in in Major League Baseball right now. Um, yeah, but I, there, you know, there always could be surprises out there. I mean, right. there could be teams that aren't on that list that end up having great seasons. That lineups that we don't haven't heard of yet. That you know, yeah, yeah, very well. The Dodgers could, the Dodgers that they could just not get along and it could fall apart for them. Right. Correct. Correct. So. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, it looks like the Royals have exercised their option on manager Mike Matheny through the 2023 season. So yeah, they're sure. bringing him back. Bringing him back. Um, Brian Cashman uh, emit, uh, emits World Series drought for the Yankees as the cheating Houston Astros are the reason why the Yankees are not in the World Series. So it was that mm-hmm. was the 2017 yeah. uh, loss. If you, listen, to yep. if you listen real closely, though, you can hear the trash cans in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? So, so the season what starts next Thursday? Is that right? Thursday, yes, Thursday. Okay. So, I know the the some teams start on Thursday, some teams start on Friday. Um, yeah, next week, but. Again, that's something else we can kind of look at the scoreboard. Uh, and um, I think we went through our predictions last week of how we thought it was going to stack out by the end of the season. Yes, but just like that, we can always, you know, we could be wrong too. <laughs> Things can go haywire. The completely different opposite direction too by the time uh, it's all said and done. But I think we're all happy. You know, I still think Brian, uh, I think uh, – the commissioner needs to be fired. Rob Manfred needs to go. Oh yeah, yeah. This season, even though I know they got a a, a CBA done, it took too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he had something to do with that. You're lucky it was a week. I, I think it's time for him to be exercised out if I'm the owners. But then again, if you're the owners, maybe you won the CBA. Why would you want to get rid of a guy that helped you win it? So we'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah. How that all breaks down. Yep. So let us flip to the. Seems like we always end every show with the National Football League, even when there's not any games going on. <laughs> right. Uh, but there again, um, breaking news. Obviously, if you guys have not heard, and this is broken in my area, that Bruce Arians has retired as the head coach of the Tampa yep. Buccaneers to hand the reins to former New York Jets head coach, Todd Bowles. Um, I think that this was kind of the plan overall. I don't think this was any surprise that this was going to happen. 
Um, I know that they have, you know, rumors have said that it was when Tom Brady came back, he wanted to change because he had a rift with Bruce Arians. I got the chance to listen to the press conference this afternoon and Bruce denies them be, uh, being a rift. I don't know why he denied it. If it was true, I don't know. Uh, Bruce seems to be a pretty honest type of guy. I don't think he sugarcoats a lot of things. I think he tells you. No, how no, I don't think so either. I think. Yeah. He, he, he tells you how he feels. <laughs> I can say that right now. Nothing wrong with that. He, he tells you. Um, I think that. I, I honestly think. I'm back. Sorry, my internet's been stupid. Um, I honestly think what caused Bruce to retire was Brady coming back. Okay. You know. And it, now it gives Todd Bowles the chance to work with Brady. Right. No, I, I, I agree. I think he, Todd Bowles, I think partly of why he failed with the Jets is the lineup that he had. I don't think he had the the, the offense that he has here. Um, they're, They had a good defense while well, well, Todd Bowles was in, in New York, but their offense was not the greatest. Mm -hmm. So... You have a lot of weapons here, obviously. You have the greatest quarterback of all time. Um, and I think this is this is Todd Bowles' time to shine because let's say, guys, they win 13 games this year. They go to the Super Bowl again. They win one. And Tom says, you know what? I'm retiring, and this is going to be permanent. I'm not coming back. Then what do you mm -hmm. do next year for Todd Bowles? Because now yeah. it's his team. So it – this is the best chance that Todd Bowles has to redeem himself as a head yeah, coach. Yeah, that's right. Now. I, that's what what everyone in that organization was looking at. It was like we got Brady for one more year. Yeah, we give you know then we get we give um, Bowles a chance to get his confidence back. Mm -hmm. With Tom Brady such a coach anyway, people respect him and, and he's a leader. I think it was very, very wise for the Bucks to hold on to Byron Leftwich too. I don't yeah. think Tom would have come back if Byron was gone. Seriously, right. I, can, I can officially say that. I don't think – I think if Byron would have become a head coach somewhere, which I believe he will be a head coach one of these days. Yeah, um, within a year or two, he should be a head coach somewhere. Yeah, I think him and the other – and you know who else needs to be a head coach by now is Eric Bieniemy, the offense coordinator for the Chiefs. He needs yeah. to get a head coach yeah. job. Both of them. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, I don't know if you guys heard or not, but the NFL drafts have been announced over the next three years of draft sites. Yeah. This year it's in Vegas. Next year it's in Kansas City, and it will be in Detroit in 2024. As mm -hmm. they beat out Green Bay and Washington D.C. for the event, right. so Detroit will be hosting. The 2024 NFL Draft. Um, that came off of Tom Pissarro's Twitter account, uh, NFL, yeah. NFL Network. So those have been that has been announced. Um, it looks like um, you guys know who Kevin Burkhart is. He's taking over as the Fox's number one play-by-play -play announcer. Yeah, yeah, I've seen one. I saw that earlier. I saw that earlier in the week. Yep. Yeah, I've seen him. Who I is he? Have I, I mean, I'm sure I've heard of him before, right? Yeah, he's really like second banana compared to like uh, you know, Aikman and Schmuck. <laughs> Aikman, Aikman, Aikman and Schmuck are going to be hosting at Monday Night Football from here on out. Now yeah. he's, and, there goes okay, the says, Buckhart has uh, the beloved former New York Mets reporter for SNY. Yeah, that's in my okay. area. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Buckhart's booth partner Greg Olson is reportedly a leading candidate to move up with Burkhart into the number one team. Olson said on Yahoo Sports the rush last week he would love to make the announcement he was joining the number one team, but we're not there yet. Okay. NFL broadcaster booths are undergoing major shuffle, big names leaving for other companies and massive paychecks. Yeah. Al Michaels, the iconic NBC figure is now with Amazon Prime Video for their Thursday night football broadcast. He'll partner with Kirk Herbstreet, 
who is still under contract with ESPN, but can call games for other networks. Chris Collinsworth, who I can't stand. Nobody can. Uh, Michael's former partners remaining in NBC on Sunday Night Football. Or Mike Tirico will move into Michael's spot. Oh, I can't stand Mike Tirico either. Uh, um, Burkhart 48 was a used car salesman in New Jersey two decades ago before getting his initial break with the WCBS and WFAN radio. He yep. had updates as a part-time worker in 2004-05, while the boss at the Chevy dealership allowed him to work flexible hours. Uh, WFAN hired him as a full-time after seven months of the car gig to pay his major bills. He eventually landed in the SNY in 2007. Booth icons as Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez, and Ron Darling with the Mets. Wow, that's cool. Uh, Burkhart joined Fox Sports in 2013. When in the position hosting the World Series, he graduated from William Patterson in 1997 and called minor league baseball games right out of college. Okay, so I think I know who this guy is. So. Yeah. So do I. Looking forward to some new blood as being the number one team um, for Fox moving into the, the – all the, the Tampa Bay games are on Fox. The Bucks games are always on Fox. So right. we'll see if they're the ones that, that are the number one, depending on who's on Fox uh, that day. Um, it looks like uh, – this is from Ian Rappaport. The Eagles and Colts proposal has – oh, they're going to make the uh, overtime possession. Both teams get it in the playoffs as well. They changed the rule. Did you guys hear that? They made yeah, that, I did. Dumb. They made that rule permanent in the playoffs. Uh, uh, both teams will possess the ball. Yeah, the both playoffs. teams get a possession no matter what. Correct. Yep, no matter what happens. If the team scores a touchdown or whatever – they still get the other team still gets to possess the ball. Somebody mentioned on the radio the other day that it's the Josh Allen rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, because somebody, because they had a complaint there, you know, they say, oh, we need a chance to do ours, you know, like, oh, shut up. Don't be, you know, because you had to be a wuss and complain to the NFL owners that, oh, we need to make, we need to make this fair. It's football, people. Fair. But don't forget, after each team has the ball, after that, it is sudden death. Yeah. Right. I'm good with it. I like it. Both teams, I mean, you know, it, it really changed, you know. Now you can, now you have the, now you, now you have the option of going, getting after it and trying to end the game right there. You know, trying to make that big play and, and end the game right there. Now, now you have so many questions, you know, it, it makes the game. It makes overtime and that much more compelling. Do you take the ball first? Do you take do you you go on offense? Do you go on defense? Do you wanna do you wanna score? Do you wanna try and stop them from scoring? You know, it all depends on how you're playing going into overtime. Like if if you're rolling hot and you've just made a fifteen point comeback to send the game to overtime, maybe you want the ball first. Go down there and try and score that game winning game leading touchdown. Yeah. Does your does yeah. your defense just giving up a, an eighty nine yard drive? For a game tying field goal, do they need a blow? Do you need to do you need to go out there on offense to try to give your defense a bit of a break? That's yeah, so much more. Yeah. There's gonna be more strategy now to it. So much more strategy. Us. Yeah. Who wins the coin because, toss and all that stuff? Yep. Because we before and now again now a coin toss can't win you the game. Correct. Even though that doesn't always mean you're going to win, you you have to, to get the uh flip of the coin. It does not guarantee you're going to win. That was a bomb. Uh, uh, here's here's what Todd Bowles – uh, this is off the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Twitter page. Here's what okay. he wrote. Um, I appreciate of the Glazer family and Jason Light for having faith in me to take on this role and to Coach Arians for his support and guidance over the past four decades. Tampa has become home for my family, and we are excited to remain part of the community for years to come. As an right. organization, we have all the pieces in place to continue the winning standard that has been established here in recent years. I'm eager to get started with our players, coaching staff, and front office in preparation for the 2022 season. So that just popped up on the um, Buccaneers uh, Twitter page. Wanted to read that to you guys. I, I, 
I think Tom Brady coming back made Bruce Arians' decision to retire that much easier. Mm-hmm. I think so too. I think Bruce was gonna. I mean, he's won. He's got two Super Bowl rings. One as an assistant. One as the head coach. So, yeah. what else do you? At, at, now, do you guys think he's a Hall of Fame coach? Mm. Uh, uh, no. I don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, but I think he gets in. I don't think I, he's a first I, ballot I, Hall of Famer. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I think he gets in. I think he'll be one of the guys that gets on the Bucks Ring of Honor by the end of the Yeah, it's already, go, it's already been announced he's going on the Ring of Honor. Yeah, so that won't, you know, uh, um, yeah. that won't be a shocker. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they announced it earlier today that he's going to be going into the ring. I don't know if it's going to be this year or next year, but yeah. I will be at the USF spring game next Saturday night. So that'll be at Raymond James Stadium. So that'll be cool. Uh-huh. Under, the lights, under the lights at Raymond James Stadium. Um, but here is, guys, I mean, again, this is, I know this is kind of early to have mock drafts, but I wanted to open up this one yeah. from, uh, this is Mike Tannebaum's, you know, Pick his 32 picks, uh, one pick for each team. So I'll go down the list. Um, number one, obviously, the Jaguars have the first overall pick. He has them taking Aiden Hutchinson, the defensive end out of Michigan, which I would agree with that pick. I think they need help on defense, and I think he can be uh, a, uh, a beast in a year or two when he adjusts. Uh, like, I think – had him mentioned that a couple weeks ago that he would have some time to adjust. Um, yeah. The second overall pick is the Detroit Lions. He has them drafting Ahmad Gardner, the cornerback out of Cincinnati. Mm. Defensive secondary help. That the Lions. Smoke. And he got it. Yeah, I saw that. Good catch. Right. Um, the Houston Texans. Take safety Kyle Hamilton out of Notre Dame. They're, okay. yeah, they need all kinds of help in, in Houston. So yeah. You got to start somewhere. Um, yeah. uh, Lou, he has your Jets taking wide receiver Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State to help. Um, their help, help Zach That's Wilson. That is interesting. You're right. Yeah. I think Olave is better. Um, the number five pick is the Giants. He has them taking offensive tackle Evan Neal out of Alabama. Hmm. They, need, they need some help, Bobby. Now, here's the question I have. They still have Daniel Jones, right? He's still their quarterback, Correct. right? Unfortunately, okay. yes. Okay. I was just checking. Um, the number six pick, the Carolina Panthers, he has them taking the first quarterback in the draft, and that's Kenny Pickett, the quarterback out of Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's – I mean – Obviously, Carolina, you know, they, they got to do something at the quarterback position. Sam Darnold obviously did not work out. Cam Newton is not what he used to be. Nope. So, Kenny Pickett may be that type of guy that I don't know if he'll start, but we'll see. Um, the Giants pick again at number seven via the trade with the Chicago Bears. He has them taking Kavon uh, Tubido, the defensive end of Oregon. That, that, that kid's a beast. I saw him yeah. in the highlights last year. He's a beast. So is Aiden Hutchinson, too. They're both – both of them are good defensive ends. They're going to be great. And if – barring they don't get injured, they're going to have both good NFL careers, yeah. I think, yeah. at defensive end. Um, the number eight pick is Drake London, the wide receiver out of USC. Going to the yeah. Falcons, obviously. Marcus Mariota will be the head honcho because it's not Matt Ryan anymore. <laughs> um, the Seahawks get the ninth overall pick via the Broncos. He has them taking Akeem and Quinulu, the offensive tackle from NC State. Obviously, they need offensive line help in Seattle. I can see them moving up to get Pickens, too. Okay, okay, okay. Um. The Jets get the number 10 pick via the Seahawks. He has them taking Jermaine Johnson, the second defensive end from the Florida State Seminoles. Okay. Okay. Keeping up the defense. Um, number 11, Washington Commanders. You were just talking about Oale. They have taken him, the wide receiver out of Ohio State. So that's who they have the Washington. Mm-hmm. 
Um, number 12 pick is Travon Walker, the defensive end out of Georgia, going to the Minnesota Vikings. Um, Houston Texans draft number 13 via the Browns, picking Charlie Cross, the offensive tackle from Mississippi State. Um, okay. The next pick is the number 14. 14 is Baltimore. He has them taking Tyler Lindenbaum, the center out of Iowa. Iowa seems I, to have very good offensive linemen. Uh, <laughs> I, could see them, I could see them moving up to try and get Pickens, too. Not Pickens, I mean Olave. Sorry. Olave, okay. To help uh, Lamar Jackson? Yeah, give him somebody to throw the ball to. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Eagles get picks 15 and 16. That's interesting. Um, the 15th overall pick, they have Devin Lloyd, the inside linebacker from Utah. And then they have them taking Kevon Green, uh -huh. guard slash center out of Texas A&M. The number six, 17 pick is the Chargers. Okay. They have them taking Knuckleball Dean, the inside linebacker from Georgia. And that will just beef up the defense that they are. Already have you've got Mac Joey Bosa? That's gonna be a, that's a bitch of a defense in, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Um, 18th pick is the Saints, they have them taking Trevor Penning, the offensive tackle from Northern Iowa. Okay, um, the Eagles can at 19, Trent McDuffie, cornerback out of Washington. Um, now getting... here's the interesting, here's an interesting pick, bud. The Pittsburgh Steelers pick number 20. They have them taking Malik Willis, the quarterback from Liberty. He's mm. a bunch of the making. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, number 21 overall pick is the Patriots. He has them taking Andrew Booth Jr., the cornerback out of Clemson. Obviously, mm. you don't have Stephon Gilmore, but you did bring back Malcolm Butler and Jalen Mills. And I think they signed Jamil Peppers too, right? Uh, Jamil Peppers, yeah. Yeah, yep. They need, um, a, they need a receiver too. Yeah, they do. They need they need some weapons for for uh, yeah. for Mac. Yeah. Who's that wide um, receiver out of Alabama that was going to be on the board this year? I think that's who the Patriots are going to end up taking. I'll have to see, buddy, if he's down here because they have the Packers taking. Javon Dotson, who I got to see at the Outback Bowl, which, if you guys do not know, it's no longer going to be called the Outback Bowl. They mm -hmm. have decided to rechange the name to the Tampa Bay Bowl. Outback pulled out of the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be that next year or this year coming up. They have them taking J Javon Dotson. He's a good one. I don't know if he played in the Outback Bowl. He may have sat out, if I remember right. I, I know the major player that Penn State was missing. Um, he has the Cardinals at 23 taking David. Bear with me because this is a Michigan guy. Ojabo, oh, there you go. Thank you. No he, problem. Yeah, um, now it says he tore his Achilles during the Michigan's pro day. There's a chance yeah. he falls further than this, but Arizona should be excited to land a player with his pass rush traits. So, there you go. I think, I think that's probably, I think. Because they already said that it's not it's not anything, you know, I mean, obviously it's not minor, but it's not serious, serious. Okay, so it's not a major. Okay. Yeah, he should be ready for training camp from what okay. I was hearing the other week. So, yeah, I could see him. Mm -hmm. I could see him slipping a couple of spots, but I don't see him falling out of the first round. Uh, he has the Dallas Cowboys drafting Derek Stingling Jr., the cornerback out of LSU. Um, number 25, the Bills, Kyler Gordon, the cornerback out of Washington. Um, 26, Tennessee Titans. He has Trevon Brooks, the wide receiver out of Arkansas. Um, he has the Bucks taking Jordan Davis, the defensive tackle out of Georgia. They're going to need to sign some guys along the defensive line because they have not brought back uh, Adamic back. He's not back yet. JPP is not re-signed either. So and that would, they could let both of those guys go and, and sign Jordan, and that would be. Yeah. Well, you have Vita Vea on that line. They brought back William Golston back. Right. They have Shaquille Barrett, obviously, can play defensive end or linebacker. Um, 
he could play either position. He's kind of one of those, uh, you know, uh, players hybrid, that could guy. hybrid guys that could play both positions. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, right. They have the Packers again at 28, taking Zion Johnson, the guard center from Boston College. I didn't know that they needed offensive line help in Green Bay. I guess they do. Well, obviously, they do. Um, here might be the wide receiver you're talking about, but they have the Chiefs via Miami, San Francisco. Is it Jamison Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama? Is that the yeah. one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. He has them going. He has them going to the Chiefs. Obviously, now when you lose Tyree Kill, obviously yeah. you're going to go wide receiver to help Patrick Mahomes, right? That's the right. Thing. But I think I think that if the Patriots were smart, they'd snag him up. I agree. I agree. Look we'll at see what how... Lamar Chase did for. Um... Yeah, for the Bengals, right? Yep. Well, we'll see how well, Jamal Chase you know, did for Joe Burrows. Yeah, we'll have to see how how which way Bill Belichick goes, because I'm curious on how that's going to work right. out. Um, the Chiefs take the 30th pick. He has them taking Arnold Ibikiti, the defensive end from Penn State. 31 is the Cincinnati Bengals. He has them taking Roger McCree. McCree the cornerback out of Auburn. And then the Detroit Lions get the pick via the Rams with that pick. They traded their first pick. And are you ready for this? He has them taking Matt Corral, the quarterback out of Old Miss. Right. Do you like that pick? I think Matt Corral's a good quarterback. I, he got hurt, but I think he's a good quarterback. I think also competition. Really give Jared Goff some competition. Yeah, well, I mean, Jared Goff is, he is what he is, and he's not going to get any better. And right. I don't know. But they're so far off right now that drafting a quarterback really doesn't, I don't I don't know. They're, they're so far off in it, and they don't have, and there isn't a number one guy Hey, there's a Peyton Manning or an Andrew Luck sitting out there in the draft. Now I would be like, yeah, let's go get him. Right. Yeah, this is not really a big quarterback. Um, it's not a quarterback heavy draft like it has been the last correct. couple of years. Correct. Yeah, the guys that the guy that the, you know, only three he only has three quarterbacks going in round one. Which what was it last year? Or the year before, you had two or three off the board right immediately. So yeah, yeah, like three in the first five picks. Yeah, so no, I don't know. It's it's still we're still what two or three weeks away from the draft. Yeah, I think we're, yeah, I think we're a month away, but I think it's the end of April. I think. Yeah, right. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, when? But um, you know, and the thing about it is, is that you know you still have Baker Mayfield out there available. Correct. If someone wants to get a deal done with with Cleveland, I think Baker Mayfield stays in Cleveland until the uh, until after the first week of preseason. You got to assume that somebody's going to have a quarterback get hurt. Well, I mean, there there have been rumors, bud, that they want that that the they want the Bucks to pick him up, and when Tom retires, he takes Tom's spot. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard, I've heard rumors about that down here. So I don't know. I, I think that I think he gets moved to somewhere that needs a quarterback when three seasons over. I agree. I agree. I think, I think that's what the. I think that's what Cleveland's banking on is they don't there's not not a lot that can be there's not a lot of trade value right now, but as soon as somebody goes down with an injury yeah. or if, if yeah. Drew Locke is just god awful in, in yeah. Washington or not Washington, excuse me, Seattle. He goes there. Yeah. Oh, speaking of that, I did see too that Colin Kaepernick was named the captain of the Michigan spring game. What was your opinion yeah. on that? Really? I saw that the other day. Jim Harbaugh. Yep. He's the former Harbaugh quarterback at uh, <laughs> in San Francisco. Correct. When is when is your spring game? But is that coming up next week? Coming up. Uh, next week, week after next, I'm not sure. Hang on a second. Okay. 
Let me look that up real quick because I'm curious. I guess I know USF's is next next Saturday. I'll be there whether I'm in the in the stands or I I had I did apply for credentials. So we'll see if I get them or not. Um, it looks like it is actually, but it looks like it's this Saturday. I was thinking that I wasn't yeah. sure. It's uh, yeah, this Saturday, April second at noon, Mays versus Blue okay. Spring game. Yep, it's this Saturday coming up. This Saturday, and then see here's the schedule. Now again, this is how they have it. Uh, this year we can go through this. They have them at home. Their home games to start the season are Colorado State, Hawaii, UConn, Maryland, which Maryland's in the conference. And they are at Iowa, at Indiana, home against Penn State, home against Michigan State, at Rutgers, home against Nebraska and Illinois, and then on the road in Columbus at the Horseshoe against Ohio State to end the season. So that's how the – um, Michigan schedule is laid out this year. Yeah, well, it depends. I, I'm just. I, we need off. We need defensive line. If the defensive line plays half as good as it did last year, we should be in the thick of it. Do you think, Bud, that they have a shot of running the table? I do. But the one game now that Harbaugh has gotten over the the Buckeyes, he's got to beat Michigan State. That's the team that's still left on the schedule that he's had trouble against. He needs to beat them. And he's at home, too. It's a home game this year for them. So, I I mean, I yeah. think that might be the game. Penn State's always tough. I, I don't – Yeah. You, you yeah. got them at home. You got them at home. That's good. You're not in Happy yeah. Valley. So, you're not in Happy Valley playing them. Um, but, I mean – you guys should handle Nebraska quite well. Mm-hmm. Illinois, you guys shouldn't have any problem against those teams. Right. And Iowa might – Iowa's always a pest. Yeah. They don't go away. Iowa's a true. pest. Maryland should be no problem. That's your homecoming game. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely can see us going – being 11-0 and 0 going into – um. Ohio State? This game. Yeah, I think, um, of course, Michigan State gives us fits, but then again, that's just what it happens in college football is your rivals are going to give each other fits. Yeah, correct. Yep. We are actually yeah. one day, 14 hours and 17 minutes from kickoff for the uh, Mesa Blue game. Yep. Oh, really? Spring game. Yep. That ran me on weekend. Yep. Let me, let me I can I believe I can pull that up. I, I know the USF schedule is up, so let me let me pull it up. I know I know the I know USF travels this year to Gainesville to play the Gators in the swamp. I know that. That was part of the the um, green and gold game is next Saturday at Raymond James Stadium. During the halftime, they're having a um, a alumni um, flag football game. So mm. that should be interesting. Yeah, that's – yeah, they have uh, – Sounds like fun. Yeah, they, that's what's happening at half, at the half. Um, like I said, I, I, I talked to – uh, Ralph Garcia on the phone. He's like, no, you're not going as a fan. I said, well, I already got a ticket. It's free. Hmm. It didn't cost me anything. So if you're going to go as a credential member, I go, okay. And my neighbor <laughs> happens to be a photographer. So uh-huh. I may have got him, I got, may have got him a credential too, as a photographer. Um, cool. the pools open on September 3rd at home against BYU. Then they play Howard University. Then they're at Florida, at Louisville. That's good. Ooh, those would be two, two tough games. Um, home against East Carolina at Cincinnati. That'll be tough. Home against Tulane should be interesting. At Houston, at Temple. They beat Temple last year. Home against SMU. 
at Tolson and they're then they're at home against Central Florida at the end of the season. So I don't know. I, I hope that they win more than two games. That's I had them at four and seven. Yeah, I mean I, I would I would it would be great to see them win six games. I don't know if there are six wins on that schedule. I don't know either. But I have them I had that four and seven with the UCF game pending because rivalry games are always wild. Right. They almost beat UCF last season too. So. They almost beat them in back-to-back seasons. Right, correct, correct. So it's crazy. I, didn't, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think that there's any reason to speculate that this year ain't going to be any different. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the obviously the question. I mean, the the, the BYU game will be a question mark because I don't know how they're going to come out. They may yeah. come out great or they may come out flat. And BYU is a team that. Flat. It could be flat too. I don't know how they, how, what they. I have them losing to BYU. Okay. The Howard game, I'm not too worried about that game. They should win that game. I got to start for Howard. Howard. Poor guy. Uh, um, yeah. <clears throat> the game against the Gators, I don't, I don't see them winning that game. I know the Gators have a new head coach. I, I just, that would be a big upset if they can pull, especially mm-hmm. in the swamp. Oh, boy. Sweet. That would be huge. Now, you want a swamp coming to the Meadowlands? That's a swamp in itself. Here's the question. Here's the question. I I was asked if I go as a credential member for USF and somehow they pull that upset. I guess I get out of the stadium early, right? I get out of there before I I get. Yeah. Oh, bro. Might be a smart move. <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> um, well, I'll be for that day. Uh, the Louisville game, how do you have that one, Bud, going? That's up in the air for me. Louisville's a interesting team every year. It just depends. Yeah. For, at USF might be able to get an upset on that. Louisville. You got Louisville? Okay. I, I don't know. I think I just. Well, I mean, I'll be able to kind of tell you guys how I feel about the team more. Definitely. After right. next week. When I go next Saturday, I'll let you guys know how I feel about the quarterback position and Please do. all that stuff. Yeah, next week. Um, yes. The Eastern, I, I think they can beat ECU. I know ECU gave them yep. last year. I think that's a winnable game. Yeah. Um, Cincinnati, uh, that, that no, I, I don't. I, Cincinnati, no. tough. the Tulane game, I think could go either way. I, the Green Wave or that that game could go either either direction. I had that one as a win. Win, okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think they can beat Houston. No, uh, I, I, Houston rolled them last year. Uh, okay. I think they can. I think they can beat Temple again, even though it's on the road. Okay. Yeah. Um, the SMU game. Uh, I don't know. Mustangs are tough. They should get killed, but. That's, that's a tough, yeah. That's like a I just I don't see SMU falling that far down this year. Okay. Um, I think they can beat Tulsa on the road. Yeah. The Hurricanes. I think they can. I think they can beat them. And then, like you said, now here's the funny thing about the game against UCF. Normally, that game takes place on Black Friday. Yet, right. It could be shifted till Saturday. If it goes to a Saturday game, it'll be under the lights at Raymond James Stadium. I uh-huh. would think, depending on how where UCF and USF are at and in, in, when it's all said and done, mm-hmm. I think, to be honest with you, instead of having a game at 3 or 4 o'clock on Black Friday, I think you'd have a shit ton of more fans in the stands for a Saturday night game Absolutely. in Tampa than you would on a Friday afternoon, especially Black Friday. Everybody goes out shopping and is tired. They don't want to go to a football game. Well, one's it? I'd rather go to a football game. I would also. I agree with you. I think it'd be better if they move that game to the to Saturday night. I mean, trust me, as a yeah. Yeah. as a media member, I don't care either way. But I I would rather have it Saturday night under the lights. You know, to be there. This will be <clears throat> my fourth year covering them, and I've only been to one U- USF UCF game. That was last year. The first year I, I didn't get a chance to go because um, of underlying conditions. But um, 
right. I know, like, like like Adam said, the last two years, the year. Okay, so I I think I I've, I've told you that story that I was at the USF UCF game two years ago, and I left because they were down by like twenty one points. I'm like, I'm out of here, and I leave the stadium, and they score fourteen points before I get to the parking lot. Uh, they got they got a turn a touchdown, and they got a turnover, and I'm like, shit. I leave the game and they're going to win. They ended up losing at the end on a fumble. And then last year they lost because of time management issues. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm looking forward to the season. I'm, you know, again, it's, it's, it's always a great feeling. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> you know, when August rolls around and I'm going to try to go to some high school football games this year. That's a definite. Yeah, I made one last year. It was a lot of fun. Um, try to go to the, try to go to that. And then, you know, man, waking up every Saturday morning and mm-hmm. <laughs> nine o'clock ESPN college game day and watch them go through their picks and everything. And, you know, it's so cool how wherever they, you know, wherever, whatever stops they make. So that'll be kind of cool. And then obviously then the NFL season starts not too long after that. So, uh, but uh, other than that, guys, I have yep. nothing else on the docket. Is there anything you guys want to discuss or go back over? Well, there is one thing that um, has been brought to my attention, although it's not anything to do um, – well, not as far as general, but it has to do with the service. Um, are you guys familiar that uh, Zoom is uh, changing? Anybody anybody use Zoom, first of all? I haven't used Zoom no. in a while. Uh, uh, they're, they're looking to change Zoom, uh, I think, uh, June 1st or somewhere mm-hmm. on that, that mark. Uh, you have to use another uh, – they're not using like I said, like a Zoom Chrome or whatever, because uh, I use it for Monday nights to do uh, Ralph's show, and uh, it's a little noise that came up. I just wonder how I can uh, fix it so I don't have to, you know, be canceled uh, out. <laughs> uh I would, you know what, Lou? If I was you, ask ask Ralph because he would be able to tell you. I'll ask him on Sunday, but, but you, I'll, yeah, I'll go over to him again on Monday's show because you know it's gonna take you know telling him face to face how how it works rather than just leaving him a message. You, because you you do a baseball show with him on Monday nights, right? That's correct. He told me about that. He told yeah. me about that. Yeah. It's called You're me. Out. No, uh, yes, it's all. It's an all baseball show, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. called You're Out. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to call it Kill the Yump, but that's too insulting. Man. Kill the. <laughs> Kill the Yump. How, how about How about Kill Rob Manfred? How about that? You might You might draw a lot of viewers for that one. Kill the owner. Uh, kill the owner. That's not a little too cruel. I just think we should get him kill the owner. That's what we. Kill that's the commissioner. We, kill the commissioner. Kill the commissioner. <laughs> Nobody likes an old beater. No, I don't like it. I'll explain another time. All right. So anyway, um, aside from all that, and besides, that, I did my uh, my taxes are all done too. Okay. All right. Anywho. <laughs> I let that joke from last week, everybody. Yeah, boy. You got me doing it now. Right. First of all, I want to everybody for the birthday wishes last week. Thank you very much. I got about 40 of them on, on Facebook. Um, Enhanced Sports Show is Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. We'll, dis- we'll discuss, of course, the men's and women's Final Four. Uh, we'll go over the uh, the last the last few weeks of spring training. we got some NBA and NHL news. And if uh, – and- NFL uh, free agent frenzy continues. Yeah, we'll discuss that ridiculous new overtime rule in the playoffs, which I still think is ridiculous. Draw your own conclusions, though, of course. And for those of you of special interest, we'll be discussing, you guessed it, WrestleMania. Uh, Adam, if you have time, you might want to join in. (laughs) And all I'm doing. So 5 to 7 p.m., I think WrestleMania starts at about 6 or whatever. So, for all your wrestling geeks, uh, you might want to tune in with all the rest of the news and everything else. So, call the Enhanced Sports Show, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Number is 512-543-4662 or 1-800-BODY-SLAM. No, no. no, no. <laughs> 512-543-4662. I think in Canada it's called 1-800-BODY-SLAM. That's a totally different number. I tried. I tried. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess better, that, people. I do my own jokes. WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania starts this weekend, so yes. we'll, we'll talk. We could talk about that. Uh, yeah, but uh, again, to me, when we talked earlier about it, to me, the card seemed very vanilla. Um, mm-hmm. It's yeah. not anything exciting like it used no. to be. Where, but 
I want, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I think the one one thing I want to see is I want to see Stone Cold Steve Austin just light um, Kevin Owens up. I just, yeah, I, I, I want to see that happen. Um, I would like to see Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar. That would be interesting. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, and the reason I say that is because their match a couple years ago, um, I think when it, I think when it was in Los Angeles, when Seth Rollins uh, gave his Money in the Bank contract and then ruined that match because that was one of the best matches for a while, and then he disturbed it with his Money in the Bank. Well, that's the way it was. It was written out. Can't say he did it. The writers did it, and he won the title, and you know. Stole the magic from that match. So I hope it would, be, it would be cool to see Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar go at each other on Sunday night. Hopefully the match is long and it's not short. Because <laughs> that yeah. would suck if it's a short match. Hopefully it goes a long time. Throwing some money back. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, does anyone, anyone out there, does anyone have the WWE Network? Is it still $10 or have they upped the, uh, up the fee for it? I don't have it. I don't have it either. I had a I had a friend of mine that used to have it. And I just use his login information, but I don't have it either. So right. I'd have to go to somebody's house or go to a sports bar. I'm sure it would be on there. Um, events like that do draw some people, the wrestling fans that don't want But most people watch it at home, like a UFC fight. You'd rather watch it at home where you can mm-hmm. pause it or go to the bathroom when you want to. You don't have to, to worry about that. Um, other than that, guys, uh, again, uh, thank you again, anyone that tuned in. We appreciate all of you that tuned in. If you want to see this show in its entirety, you can head over to the Walker Report YouTube page. All the shows will be on there in their entirety. So please like, share, and subscribe. That would be awesome to build That's that cool. over there. Um, we will be back, guys, next Thursday. Um, which will be the third or fourth, the fourth of April. Um, so that'll be interesting next Actually week. Actually, the seventh of April. I'm sorry, it's something. My my apologies. The seventh of April uh, next week. So we'll be back at our normal eight p.m. time. Um, until then, guys, this has been the Walk Report. I am the sports nerd, Bradley Walker. We are part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio and part of NGSC Sports. Remember the website, guys. It's NGSCSports.com. We are sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. Until then, guys, we love all of you. Thank you again for coming on. Shout out to our men and women of our armed services and our first responders. Until next Thursday, everyone, stay safe out there. Uh, Thoughts and prayers still with the people in Ukraine. Seems like they're kind of keeping Russia at bay as of right now. We all know that can change in a blink of an eye. So still our thoughts and prayers are with them. But until then, guys, everyone, stay safe. Peace. Peace.